Jed Grant. I uh, have been involved in crypto and blockchain space for many years. Um, pretty active since 2015, building different things and looking at how the technology works and how it can, can be used. Um, wouldn't call myself a Bitcoin maximalist, but I'm pretty darn close to that. But I'm a realist in that I expect other chains to exist and other coins to exist, whether or not they, they should, or it's a different question. So that's, and I focus on, on putting all that together. I'm also an expert in, in compliance and financial crime, and my day job involves managing financial crimes for a large institution. DeFi is problematic overall. Um, there's a lot of, well, CeFi and DeFi, as they call it. Um, so everything that's CeFi is basically traditional finance, just with a blockchain behind it. And it'll end up needing to be regulated the same way traditional finance is regulated. And that's because you have bad actors that are actually managing these things, rug pulls, all of that kind of stuff. Um, in order to prevent that and make sure that the consumer is protected, you need regulation, otherwise it doesn't work. And DeFi is often decentralized in name only, and you actually have a team that's building a protocol, and they're running smart contracts, and they have a website, and that's how consumers access that DeFi service. Um, so it's not really decentralized. It's CeFi calling itself DeFi because there's this central governance, there's, you know, and all the same risks because of the, the bad actors. So to really have DeFi, we need a, a solution like Bitcoin where the nodes are truly decentralized and the financial services interact on a trustless base. Lightning is um, a truly decentralized network. It's a mesh of node operators, a lot like Bitcoin. Um, and in this case, you can look at a Lightning node as being something that's not necessarily tied to Bitcoin. So today, Lightning works on Bitcoin. You all can also run Lightning on Litecoin, uh, Zcash. There's the Raiden network, which is modeled on Lightning, but uses smart contracts to achieve the same thing on Ethereum. But if you had a single node that could deal with all of these different chains at once and handle multiple uh, coin channels, so a Bitcoin channel, an Ethereum channel, et cetera, then you open the door for DeFi on Lightning because those nodes become FX points where you can change an atomic swap from Ethereum to Bitcoin, for example. You would receive ETH on that channel. So this is a, a you know, it's a self-custody situation. There's no one else in control of those keys. And then you would emit Bitcoin on the other side. So you're actually facilitating atomic swaps as a, as a node. And this is the first step in, in building a proper DeFi that's truly decentralized. There's a lot that has to be done in terms of today, if I run a node, I control that node and everything is two of two uh, multi-sig to open channels and close channels. There's work to do three of three multi-sig where an IoT device is the purpose they did it so that the IoT device could actually spend funds on Lightning without running a node because an IoT device might be so small and light that it can't run its own node. It can't handle a Bitcoin node. Um, so by doing three of three multi-sig, the IoT device could fund a channel that the two other node operators, the two other signatures, then manage and, and the IoT would sign all the transactions to spend its money. But if you extend that, um, you begin to look at DeFi scenarios where liquidity provisioning, so credit and these types of operations can become a reality without running a node. So the third party can be the, the liquidity provider, the credit provider, and come into a DeFi situation. And then if you have those FX nodes that I mentioned, if you have multi-chain, you have a situation where you can really create decentralized finance constructs where you have leverage, you have liquidity provisioning, and you have exchange between, between coins. Also, you have the opportunity for Lightning to absorb liquidity from other chains. So, you know, people talk about Lightning having a couple hundred million dollars on it, depending on the price of Bitcoin, but it would be very feasible for the Lightning network to easily grow into the billions um, if it could absorb other chains as well. And that's something that we see, you know, Ethereum is, a, is not an ideal um, solution for a production decentralized finance because the mempool is public, because there's front running, there's sandwiching, there's all of this uh, extractable value happening. And 
it's a great test net though to show us the, the use cases that we could do on like a lightning network where they then become private and there is no front running and there's proper market dynamics happening. Um, and when you connect all the liquidity of the other chains, you're going to get something that's huge. If you look at some of the stablecoin projects that have been done in DeFi on Bitcoin, so if you look at the DeFi platforms that have been done on Bitcoin to date, their volumes, their market caps are very small compared to what's done on, on other chains. And that's um, partly because people don't think of Bitcoin as a DeFi platform and partly because Ethereum is just so easy to build on, and it, but it's such a mess as well. It's, it's really not the ideal place to be putting our billions of dollars of liquidity. When you have a Lightning node that becomes um, an FX node, you start becoming a money service business and would be regulated in many markets. But by the nature of how uh, Lightning is deployed, you've got it behind Tor, um, you've got it in multiple countries. So you end up with a situation where it is kind of unregulatable. And I think that these, that's what's going to happen is that these technologies are not going to be regulatable in the same way that we regulate traditional finance. Uh, the only avenue to regulate that effectively is to look at the source code and require that node operators in your jurisdiction run nodes with approved source code. Um, and that would be the, the only way to do that. Is there are a lot of discussions and there are a lot of things being said and done right now about custodial and non-custodial wallets and it's it's very frustrating because it's extremely clear that politicians don't understand what they're trying to regulate and they don't understand that a crypto wallet isn't really a wallet you don't actually hold the crypto in it it is a key management system and they're trying to regulate key management which is a different problem than they think they're solving it's a great conference, a lot of good people, and, and it's small, but extremely high quality. And it's hot. It's really hot. <laughs> so it's good weather, good people, good fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a good conference.